my name is Rachel Singh, and I appreciate the opportunity to share a little bit about my journey with pancreatitis for Pancreas Disease Awareness Month. Back in 2007, when I was a freshman in college, I had my first episode of acute pancreatitis. I ended up being hospitalized for about a week and had my gallbladder taken out and hoped that this was gonna be an isolated incident. I was a pre-medicine major and taking biology and just starting to learn about the pancreas and what its function was. I've wanted to be a pediatrician since I was in middle school and knew that I wanted to go into healthcare and serve patients. So unfortunately during college, I did develop recurrent acute pancreatitis and was hospitalized a few more times. And we really didn't know kind of why this was happening. Um, and I was feeling pretty hopeless. But between episodes, I, I was feeling well, and so I just continued to study, and I applied to medical school, and thankfully I got into the University of Minnesota, which was um, where I'm from. So I started medical school, and again, during midterms of my first semester, I got a, an episode of pancreatitis, and I remember sitting in my advisor's office, just tearful, and saying, you know, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to you know, finish the semester, the you know, uncertainty of pain and the severity of pain was affecting my quality of life and kind of ability to attend class and, um, and it really made the future kind of very scary and uncertain. And right there in his office, he made a call to one of the physicians at the University of Minnesota and that led to uh, more evaluation and kind of discussion about treatment options we found out that my pancreatitis had become chronic pancreatitis. There's a lot of calcification on my pancreas and identified a couple genetic mutations that were likely contributing as well. It was a very um, kind of tough decision to weigh um, options. I knew that there was a risk of waiting um, and kind of seeing how this was going to progress um, on its own or with sort of more conservative treatments. Um, but also knew that surgical treatments were, um, you know, a big risk as well. I um, sought out several opinions, and one thing that helped me was there was a study at the time that had um, looked at patients who had had a total pancreatectomy and auto islet transplant, and um, the majority of them had wished they had done it sooner. And I remember even before hearing about this surgery, kind of telling uh, my GI physician that. I just wished I could get my pancreas out. It was just causing so much pain and um, really starting to limit me. So I, I made the decision to do that surgery um, after my first year of medical school. It was um, a big recovery. I took about six months off and, um, and a tough recovery, but um, I had a successful outcome. Um, I was able to wean off insulin and have been um, doing well with um, really relatively yeah, pain-free um, and living a, a, kind of living my life to its fullest since. Um, I went back to school and um, I connected with the, the team at the University of Minnesota and had the opportunity to um, be involved with some clinical research with them. Um, Dr. Melina Bellin and I had uh, applied for a grant uh, through the National Pancreas Foundation um, to look at endocrine function in patients with chronic pancreatitis. That was kind of my first experience with the National Pancreas Foundation and I um, just really appreciated what they're doing for advocacy, for research, um, patient support uh, through all of this. Um, this I mean, whole experience has really shaped how I um, practice medicine and how I approach patient care and, um, and it's really helped me also learn to prioritize my own health and you know to take breaks and um, Kind of give yeah give myself permission to prioritize my health when I need to. Um, I, yeah, again, just appreciate the opportunity to share my story. And if any of you have any questions or if I can be of support, um, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks.